Korea met one words in the club that neither he nor I could put a finger on any aspect of any sort of trauma, hurt, damage, nothing. Loving parents, we were a bit on bias. It just didn't work for him. He didn't talk to him. And he was very apologetic to his parents, very respectful in the house, put on the yarmulke, behaved like a yid, and he went to college and went his own direction. I went, I took him out to supper a few times. I took him out to dinner. You know, I did, I did him along in therapy. So I said, maybe I'll take you out to dinner. You'll teach me something. <coughs> we went out to dinner. You know, one, one of thousands and thousands that I wasn't very quickly able to find the process of trauma inside the <coughs> So the assumption is they asked me could they do the same thing. <coughs> so, I, so the question I put back to them, the question is, what do you think is the game plan here? Let's look at Suya. We would try to do it your way. So we're going to shove all these kids permanently off the dam. The chance of them ever coming back is very, very, very slim, if ever. So what have you achieved? What do you think? What do you do? Of Yashu, they decided, Kaddish Levachi, you all saw the clip. Everyone saw the clip, right? Uh, Uri Zohar said over the clip, it went around everywhere. Well, he said he spoke to Yashiv, and Yashiv was asked this question, the famous question about the other siblings, and Yashiv said over, so give the other siblings away. They're all doing fine. You've got uncles, you've got relatives, shwagas, give them all away. Spend your life with this one. This is the one that needs you. Give the others away. Yashiv says it in the shame of Yashiv, he asked the question, that's what Yashiv told him. Give all your other kids away. They'll all do fine. This is the one that needs you. So the question I asked was like this. What's the game plan? What's the picture? What's the goal? Where are we heading with this? Many of my Bam asked me the same question. The Dolem asked me, like when you work with the family, what's the, what are you looking at? So I told them the Taisus. Taisus, you do, and get them. The Taisus says that a Gersh in this guy of this Haret is not the Gersh, is not Chal it was five weeks. So there was no Tosis holds his own. Can what you say is that again? A Gaya Venisharit. Right? He regretted. Yeah. So the Tosis says, and regretted what? He didn't keep Shadness. That's it. Ois gave us. Right? Didn't count uh, the Sphira. No. The, 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 the big three. The big three. Yeah, Shabbos, Kashus, and Taos Mishpat. These three things. These big three. A Gesh and Iskaya, the Nisharit on one of these three things is Lumafreya, Taisus learns, is the Geras is not Chal Lumafreya. Not Kamina and all sorts of Misa and all sorts of, you know, Dina. So I said, how would it be? It looks to me like the Ika, therefore, of Yadus, of Pitosis, would be Shabbos Kastrus and Taz Mishpacha. So how would it be if we focus on the bigger picture, the down the line, we can make a relationship with my kids where eventually God comes or they just help and one day they'll come back. The Shabbos Kashas Taz Mishpach. That's my chod as a father. That's it. With this kid, that's my job. The rest, that's their life's journey. Otherwise, there'll be more. That's their journey, not my journey. My journey is Shabbos Kashas Taz Mishpach. I'm not going to tell you I asked Rishos, but this one didn't want me to give Rishos. But one of the Gudoli's I said this all the Gudah gave me a kiss and a hug and cried. Cried. And said to me, I wish we had been this wise with that kid. So they cried. Posh it to me that the game plan is way down the line. Way down the line. That we're looking at, can I help reconnect with my kid? Stop the fight and the war and the struggle and the rest. So that down the line it's reasonable. Shabbos, Kashus, Taos, Mishpach. I'll ask you a question. With what you're doing, down the line, one day, is it li more likely or less likely because you allowed this, you looked away, you were loving and warm, is it more or less likely down the line she's going to keep Shabbos, Kashus, Taos, Mishpach? Yes. There you go. Ashrecha. You did the job. You did the job. You did the job. You did the job. At what point did it stop? Not anything else. I sat with Rabbi Shmuel for an hour and a half. I know. Okay, and I asked Rabbi Shmuel and I asked Rabbi Shalom, and I was there. I was like, yeah. What? What point is it? Not Nefesh, Where are we holding? He probably said, "Ask the experts." If you huh? 
No, he, uh, he actually didn't. He was sitting with my wife. Was in his house. No, he, actually, he actually didn't say. Where is the din? That's what I'm asking. It's where is the din? He gave you a very. Reb Shalom was able to answer. Reb Shalom was able to answer. Yeah, more than Reb Shmuel. I can tell you, I had it out with all the gedolim, and nobody has a clear answer to this question. And I can tell you, the answer to this question is like. No, there's no clear answer. We're talking broad brushstrokes here. We're not talking clear answer. There is no. Every case is different. Right, you have to know the case. Uh, 100%. Every case, that's what I'm saying. Every case, every circumstance. What I'm saying is, where does the law, where, when they get At better, what where point? Look, I mean, she was extremely functional. Shabbos has You understand? Two years ago, in Akhanami, yeah. right? Last year, in Akhanami. She was extremely functional. She put herself back in school. She was talking about going to seminary next year, next year. I'm saying you're, you're doing know, the work, huh? You're doing the work. She, she's that's the work. She goes to therapy you, now. She put herself in there. You want to kill it now? Huh? You want to kill it now? No, 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 no. It's not that. That's not. That's not I'm asking, asking where Mitzad, where is the din kuach nevish? Where are we hold the kuach nevish? No one knows the answer. Okay. I don't no one can answer. answer. Huh? I don't believe. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I don't believe anyone. I've asked that question. At what point can you? I'm going to say. Let's say again. I'm telling you again. It's the wrong place. I'm going to tell you right now. It was. Let me just see it. It's the, it's the wrong doggish. It's the wrong dog. If you have to be a makel anywhere in your own value system in Ashkafa, be a makel. Find a limut schus that you can you can convince yourself that it's still begat of Kotnefish. Because it, it's always a sophic till it's not. When it's not, you'll know. No, no. That's what I'm saying. That's, what I'm saying. That's the answer. You will know. <laughs> You'll know when it's not. Yeah. But the question is, there's a boy I was sitting in my like house, this. he's in her bed. I'm going to say dead. again, yeah. when it's a suffix, when you have a doubt, it's so right, right, so that's the answer. That's, that's the answer. answer. No, no, that's the answer. When you know, you know. And it's different in different cases. Oh, but you have to keep your eye on the ball. What's the real, what's the real picture? What are we doing? How did you realize to yourself that the thick stuff's for the nefesh? Say again? How did you realize this? I asked the question. I, they, they, it was partial to me. I have two bachas. They both don't get out of bed in the water. Right? And I... You know what it is? First of all, you have to give up your own ego. That's for sure. You have to give up your own ego. And your own value system. Nothing you to do with toys. Everything with. is ego. Don't do That's right. That's for sure. You, you, you got to give out your own That's ego sure. and sure. accept one basic underlying fact. That's why life. that's why the Shivas are not made for this. No, that's, that's, I don't <laughs> mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't I mean, 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 I I don't, you know, to me, ain ra yored minashim. Ain ra yored minashim. There's no bad. It's what we do with it. That's the challenge. Kaddish Baruch Hu sets us up. He makes the nisyanis. We don't. And he gives us those people, whether it's parents or machamkim or shivas or rabbanim. He gives us all that sugya too, and it's all part of the sugya. And I don't get tied up in knots about that anymore at all. My question is just how do you realize this? When you say you, are you talking to me? Yeah. You asked me a question. How's your dying? Yeah. How? How? Yeah. You see it? Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm about to explain to you. Let me bear with me for a moment. You see two and they don't get out of bed in the morning, they go to yeshiva, they don't function, right? So first, if you get rid of your own ego, then you're actually interested in understanding, huh, I want the taka, why they're not getting out of bed? Because most of us, we jump to an immediate conclusion that's, that we resolve to protect our own ego, to protect myself. So we jump in to a place that really we don't know. We did research, we analyzed. Do you think a whole battery of psychologists would know what's really going on with him? And I'll give you a perfect example. I started doing this 20, 25 years ago, where I started accepting the fact I absolutely have no clue why anyone does anything. And then I realized they don't have a clue either. That they're just <laughs> reacting to forces beyond them. For example, I'll give you a dogma. I'm going to come back to the two in a moment. You have a friend, Yanku. 
One day, Yanko, one day, Yanko does some Misa or says something to Misa Medrash, or you hear a Shmua, it's got a ton of Misa, it doesn't make sense. And the island tumbled, and your friend comes and says, what's it, Yanko? It's my sugar. Also, yeah, I heard what he did, Yanko, so my sugar, it makes no sense. I'm always crazy, my sugar, I can't do it. Makes sense, right? That, the person could speak like that. Now, I always ask myself these days, and this is about 20 years ago, I came to this idea, how comes we don't go over to the friend and say, ask a hand about the uncle? Talking to Shuk? You have one. It makes no sense. I guess we're missing information. I guess we're missing information. What is it about us that we say, oh, young girls, we're sugar, no mother. And how come we don't just say, wow, it's like interesting, young did. We must be missing information. We must be partial of missing information. There must be something I don't understand about this subject. What is it about the nature of all of us that we go the first way, not the second way? I don't know who's more mature, your uncle or me, that I have that reaction. I have a clown godling life. When you don't understand human behavior, it's because you're missing information. It's so important. It's so simple, but so important. A posh missing information. So he gets into hits the bell. A man can taste you coming with a psak. You got two kids, both get out of bed late. They don't get up in the morning to say that. So if I nem on, I don't know why. In other words, I'm not willing to say he's posh lazy. It's an easy answer. One answer is he's lazy. It's not. Then Lam Silsushan about being an Nazi. Well, it's not being an Nazi. Zoris. But if you realize, I don't know the answer, so let me inquire. Let me look into it. Let me seek clarity and understanding. Turns out that one of the two Bachem is lazy. He says it, he knows it, he believes it. He said, I've always been lazy, I just, I don't get going. I don't know why, but that's the way I am. Okay, could be. I don't know if you're really lazy. I know you act lazy. You definitely act like a lazy person. But I don't know if that makes you lazy. The next bacha, you push him a bit. And it turns out, this bacha, they both get up at 11 o'clock. This second bacha turns out to be an abuse victim. And uh, because of the abuse, he became involved with himself physically, <coughs> with the Eisachet, and this Heile Gabacha, I call him a Heile Gabacha, is up all night long fighting himself. A Muhammad like Mamish. Unbelievable Muhammad, a guns night. He's out of bed, in bed, out of bed, walking around the house, outside, anything other than being in that bed. Getting into that bed for him, means he's going to be fighter. He knows it. He hasn't yet talked about it. He's all of 14 years old. And he knows very well he'll be fighter once he goes into that bed. He can't resist it. And he hasn't had the courage yet to talk to anyone about it. So he's up the gun tonight. He, he doesn't go into that bed till he falls into that bed, guaranteed to fall asleep. And all he does is get criticized and yelled at and screamed at for being lazy. Has a heiliger tzaddik. Mamish, heiliger tzaddik. My books, unbelievable tzaddik. A true tzaddik. And yet, he's geschmeist and screamed at and yelled at for being lazy. I, they both don't get out of bed. So years and years and years ago, it dawned on me that there's obviously has to be a chilek. And I went to all the Dodoni Yisrael to try and understand how do you know whether what you're looking at is Midas Ros or Chol How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? Maybe it's Midas Ros that needs Musa. Maybe it's Chol and Nefesh that needs Tzipur. 
needs some clemency pull to help him. So I took this question to the Bowman, thinking maybe it was now with an answer. And I got a total shutout on that. There was no answer. No one gave me an answer. It was extremely, extremely disappointing. Oh, but, oh, but the Miser, it was a good shot. It was a good shot. I got the deer in the headlights for most of the time with this question. <coughs> you know, they didn't know what to do. So I then was went... Such a sentence, very, because the yeah. answer, I'll tell you, that's exactly what they said to me, by the way. That, that kind of thing. No, no, we're not, I'm not knocking, I hope I don't sound cynical or knocking anyone. It wasn't that way at all. I went seeking advice, guidance. So then I said, well, may I suggest an answer? May I suggest, Ron Lee, was the first person I took this to. I said, can I suggest an answer? I said, of course. So I suggested an answer. And well, first of all, the question was this, my nafkamina, what the, what the, the, practically speaking, was this is huge. It's huge. Because if it's Chol and Nefesh, well, if, it, if it's Midas Ras, it's Tom Musa. If it's Chol and Nefesh, Tom and Tipper of Peace. They said, so do both. I said, Chash Bashan. Imagine you do Musa to a guy's Chol and Nefesh. You're a Mazik. If you do Tipper of to a guy who's got Midas Ras, it's a Gornish. He didn't do anything. You know, it's, it's, it's a. It's a you know, if he didn't do anything, he didn't, he didn't help him, he didn't Mazik him, really. The Yeshiva system, unfortunately. Most of us have been there. We're, okay, we've been down there. Yeah, exactly. We're past that stage, but so, they cause the mazik. So, more said, so, there, so yeah. but if you do, Chas B'Sham, you do, Musa to a guy who's called an you're a mazik. You have to know. We have to know. And the answer was fascinating, the answer I got. The answer was a very thoughtful answer. Brown Leib said it to me first, and then the answer said it. Came out, everyone said the same answer to me. The answer was... So I bazai, and he, he thought about it for a while, by the way. And then he said to me, it's partial, he said, in that case, seeing as you can't know, then you're mechuyev to be metapal first. And if you do proper tipur of fu'i, you try to heal with every possible mahalach you have, and it doesn't work, and it could take years, then after you can name on that it's midasros. Maybe. Maybe. And that was fascinating because what they freed us to do was to take a look at all the kids and ask the question, huh, I wonder where the Chol Nefesh is. And it turns out that they're both, turns out both these boys, even the one who held he was an Atzlan. I asked him, so where'd you become an Atzlan? I made a piece here an Atzlan. Like what? Is a Messiah in your family? Like what? He came from Dairis, who guess the great Atzlan? Like what? And it turns out that he's also a victim. He just didn't know. He didn't put two and two together. He didn't understand how it affected him because he had no clue to make the connection of how that, in fact, in his case, this is one of the first cases, this case, the first case of the idea, I mean, of my idea, my learning about it, was for him going back into a classroom <coughs> where... And in his case, it was unfortunate that it was a Rebbe who touched him. So going back into a classroom, for Shtetsov, he was reactive. Triggered. He was triggered and reactive. So he didn't want to. <coughs> so the first, one, Even the first one didn't want to go to bed because he was afraid of being chaita. The second one didn't want to go to school because of the reactions of intense feeling, bad feelings that he had, reactiveness going to school. Turns out neither was an Atzlan. And they both screamed at and yelled at and put down and thrown off and went off because of all the critique and nastiness they got about being lazy. They're young, lazy. imagine, from a young, yeah, yeah, no, no, like second 100%. grade, that it happens with triggers that the kids go through. Yeah, of course. It's unbelievable. So, so he didn't the make a connection. Why was this kid to go into that classroom? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. If that boy didn't make the connection. He didn't like, consciously make the connection. See, all kids unconsciously make the connection. <laughs> unconsciously they react. They just have no idea what they're doing. We all do the same thing. Listen, we all you know, have unconscious reactions to things that afterwards we're embarrassed about. I'm like a surprise to myself I had that reaction. Right? We all, we all do that. So for kids, it's devastating. 
So the first thing, you know, we have to have our eye on the ball. We have to ask, what are we really achieving here? Like, what are we after? What's the real game plan? And we have to understand that the, the, the notion or idea that these uh, behaviors by choice, and they have a philosophy behind them, they have like a longness behind them. This is shtuyot, this is narishkai, this is meshuggah, this is crazy thinking. Even if they'll argue and debate with you, it's all shtuyot. There's nothing there. That's all a wall of terutzin. And behind that wall is a wall of pain. And until we go to the wall of pain and heal, the wall of terutzin, forget, you, impa- you can actually traumatize a kid, never, by responding to the wall of terutzin as if they're real, actually creates, can create in the child a starker belief that maybe my terutzin are good. And the reason is because there's no terrets for the terrets. Because the terrets was never a terrets because it was never a kasha. There was nothing real there in the first place. So you can't be the terrets. So what they see is they come up against well-meaning Bali Ashkofer and all sorts of people trying to heal them. Trying to heal them. Right? They're all trying to do this work which cannot possibly work. Because their kasha or their terrace or whatever you want to call it wasn't real in the first place. So therefore your answer cannot heal that wound of the kasha. And the kasha will blight. The kasha will stay and forget. Engaging on that level strengthens the kasha because you will fail to answer it. So all this, you know, ashkafa and talking and all this, it's all rubbish. Therefore, we hold on to them. Therefore, we're civil and we look away. We, I asked a Ryan Lake once, many, many years ago, about the boyfriend-girlfriend situation. It was the most profound thing. You think, you know, this Godland, the Nabrak, you know, this man understands kids? Yeah, right. Better than any of us. It was amazing. Because he looked at me, and I asked him a question on behalf of one of my clients about breaking one of these boyfriend-girlfriend relationships. In that, this case, the boy was grad of doing better, he's keeping Shabbos already, and should they break it? And he has this little girlfriend, and um, you know he's all of like 16, and she's all of 14, and they're in love with each other, and should we break this relationship? Because he's schlagging now, he's moving up. And they've left it alone, on my instructions, but they feel it's time to us. And I, um, I promised the next time I met the soul, I'll ask a brown lady that question, which I did. It was amazing. He said to me, he looked at me, and he said to me, can the parents give that boy more love than the girl is giving him? And I looked at him, he said, he grabbed my hand, listen to this, it's Brian Laban, but they You know, this is like, you have to see this, it's amazing. He grabbed my hand. And he said, this is rubbish, Margot, all right. He said to me, when he looks into her eyes, that's what he says to me, when he looks into her eyes and he sees this love coming out of her eyes, looking back at him, do the parents offer something better than that? (laughs) So Brian Leib said to me. (laughs) How many years ago? This is 20 years ago, more. Uh, the well, 20 I years seen, ago. I remember which god it was. That also, there was the, the girl was dressing like a puzo, and uh, she, the, the parents went to the, the god or whatever it was, and they said also, can the, the, this type yeah, of relationship, can they give more love, can the parents yeah. give more love than the way she's dressing this way? It's a yeah, it's Pasha, it's yeah. Pasha. He looks yeah. deeply in her big brown eyes. And this boy feels like these waves of love inside. He's 16. He's an abuse victim. He's been bitterly shunned by the whole yeshiva world and his family. And he looks in her little brown eyes, and she's looking at him with total adoration and love. Exactly what is better in this world than that moment for him? Seriously. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I asked Rosh Hashiva, I asked him, I asked him. He took my hand 
and he said to me, Mitzvah Lagidete. <laughs> Mitzvah Lagidete, he said to me. Why was Taka the head? You understand this? Why was the head? I'm, I'm not sure I understand the Why is the Mishra the Yatla Lucha? Why was this? I understand why he told oh, One second, we're not reading Shaduchim to these no, boys. Not, no, we're not giving them. But it's, it's found. The master. It's, it's not my Issa. It is not my Issa. And listen again. In the longest of it, this boy is a damaged kid. Right? He's a damaged child. He's found love. <coughs> He's found love. His parents look away. They leave it alone. What do you think that does in his relationship? You've all seen the tape, the happiness pleasure paradigm tape. Right? You've seen the piece. So let me explain. The whole part. The whole knot. Just post it again. He posted again? Just for us. I was young then. You saw how young I was? That, 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 that is the classic. That's almost all kids had that whole. It's amazing. I put it on, I sent it to people, they tag it's it on Facebook. Harsh it to me uh, is as a, that the kids, for those who haven't heard it, I hope I say it right now. You know it better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I called it the happiness pleasure paradigm. Happiness comes from one place in this world. It comes from the embrace of a long-term, meaningful relationship. Everything else is pleasure. Happiness only happens in the embrace of a long-term meaningful Right? the relationship with Right? That relationship, that shafts happiness, the greatest pleasure in the world. Pleasure in this case meaning happiness. What's pleasure? What's the nafkamin? I always say chalamayid, you know, is where you can see the nafkamin. Because people spend a lot of money, foolishly, uneducated, because they're lacking information, going to music parks on Chalamai. And you spend a ton of money, and you slap your kids there, where you're watching them every second while they're walking in and out of the preachers and trying online here, and, you know, with the, whatever, and they drive you crazy all day, and you're busy with these rides and rides and rides. And then when you leave, a funny thing happens. When they're there, they seem to be having a marvelous time. You get them in the car, and they're already fighting and killing each other. And one of them for sure says, Ah, it was a rotten day, stupid day, what a waste of a day. The father's ready to chef all the kids. The mother brings ammunition, food. And she starts stuffing food in the mouths of the kids and her husband, so there won't be a World War Three right now in the car. This is a Cholomayit. What, what, that shaft happiness? It cost a belt of money. The father's fuming about the money he just shafted on this waste of time, and they're all angry. And yet, if you take your kids, if you must live to do this, and take them to a park where no one's around with a frisbee and a football, and you have a picnic in the middle of the park, and you actually interact with your child playing frisbee or football with your child, throwing the ball and catching it, and throwing the frisbee, and you do an interactive game and fun, and have a picnic together, for free, by the way, it doesn't cost anything, it doesn't cost anything, everyone walks home with a glow. Because you shaft happiness, because in the park you have pleasure. This is your soul. Happiness is only found in the embrace of a long-term meaningful relationship. Everything else is pleasure. So what happens like this? Never. A child goes through an event. The event or experience is a, a, some sort of experience, event, that causes pain, causes a hole in the heart. It hurts him, whether it's molestation, whether it's his learning disability, whatever happened to him, a bit, a shaft, a hole in the heart, that means his heart hurts. He's in pain. Now, what happens? You can't live like that. You can't live with a hole in the heart. Not physically and not emotionally. You can't. So you want to fish up the hole. So early on, the kid's young, he discovers maybe interesting music, maybe a magazine he shouldn't read, maybe an iPod, you know, with a clip from this and a clip from that. Today, it's, that's more likely. His friends handing around, you know, interesting, innocent, but interesting clips and things. Nothing uh, bad in the sense that, you know. And what does that do? The excitement. 
the excitement of doing the illicit, the unallowed, stops up the whole abyssal. And he feels good. Bashas, Mesa, he's doing the Hanhoga, whatever it is, it fills the hole. It's like shopping. Shopping disorders, right? Why is shopping disorder so popular in America? Right? Because when you shop, for that moment, you feel miserable and you go shop. That's why 24 hours a day you can call up and your credit cards and online and, and now Amazon will ship it the same day. You don't have to wait till tomorrow, chas Two hours shop. Two hour shop. You, two hour shop. you don't have to wait, chas So you only have to tolerate two hours of pain in which you have the fantasy of what's coming in two hours and that stops up the hole so you can live for another two hours because you don't have to suffer because you just bought something on Amazon that you don't need. But it'll make you feel good temporarily until you're bored with that. Right? This is stopping the hole in the heart. Like the so, yeah, so this kid stops up the hole in the heart. He's completely unaware because he hasn't seen my tape. And he's not aware, he's not sophisticated yet, to realize he's going to get caught. They always get caught. And here's what happens. The moment you catch him, the parents and or the school yell at him and punish him for the behavior that he's done to stop up the hole. Now, what does that do to the relationship between the parents and the kid? Disconnect. It makes, makes it, it a worse relationship. That means... The hole in the heart gets bigger because you got mad with him because the less happiness, the bigger the hole. So now he's left <coughs> bruised, hurting, and angry in his bedroom. And he has to think of another clever way to fill the hole because he's got a bigger hole. It's possibly getting to, you know, a dangerous matzah here, this hole in the heart business. So now he plans and he sneaks out at night and he goes to some other mesa or maybe I'll find a little girl to talk to somewhere, and that fills up the hole in the heart. The problem is, no one told him, you're going to get caught. They yes. always get caught. And when you catch him, you get mad with him. What, this? I already yelled at you for that. And this is how you pay me back? You do this? And you scream at him again, or he gets thrown out of school the second time. Suspended, whatever it is. And guess what happens to the hole in the heart? It gets bigger because the breakdown of the relationship. The worse the relationship, the bigger the hole gets. And now, he needs to even more stuff to stop up the hole in the heart. And then we catch him, because no one told him, Revered, you're going to get caught. What do you think you're not going to get caught? We're always going to catch him. Alibi, we wouldn't catch him. Always tell friend, look away, don't catch him. The only way you can catch him is if you're going to give him a hug. Then you can catch him. I had a parent called me, actually it was an uncle and aunt, the kid, the kid was kicked out. They were magnificent people, chassidish yidin, they were the most amazing human, ultra, ultra yidin. I have no clue where these people came from. They were so special, I mumish, uh, I can't even tell you, they just, they, they empowered my life. That they could be such people. Because the Tamimus and Elchkeit of these people, they heard a few of my things, so they turned to me for advice. You know, I was told, they were told I was like the Das. Tell you this, they should trust me. And they were to me, Mystic of People, the Rebbe told them, trust me. You know, by we all know what that means. The Rebbe said, trust him. <coughs> you trust him. Finish. Fatik. Done. So they came to me, and they had a business in the house. Doesn't matter what the business was. They had a business, a cash business, that they ran in the house. And they had money there. One day, they find out this uh, nephew they'd taken into the house had uh, stolen a large amount of money from them. They have something's going on, he seems to have money for things. They have, and they did some bookkeeping there, and there was a lot of money. He'd taken $10,000 of their money. And here their matzal is life. You know, they've got no children in the house anymore, and they took him in, you know, doing a taiva. And here, this is how you repay me. So they called me up. They said, they, they, they asked Eric what to do, they said, they should ask me first. So I said, well, if you're asking me, do you mind if I tell you? Is it okay if I actually tell you what to do? And then you'll have to decide if you can do it. And they said, okay, you should tell me. It was the most beautiful thing. I told them, write a note. They found the money. It was they hidden. He wasn't very good at hiding, and the, 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 the uncle was very sharp. And he found it in two seconds flat in the drop ceiling 
in the basement. This boy was in the basement room. There's a drop ceiling, and there it was. They found most of the money was still there. 9,000 and change, whatever was still there. I didn't spend that much. There was the word. They found it. I said, excellent. Here's what you do. You write a note. And on the note, you say, dear uncle, dear uncle, we love you to pieces. We want you to stay here. And we know you're suffering. And, uh, you know, life is hard for you. Shtetzach is poshant. And this hard life of yours, I see, brought you to uh, borrowing some of our money without rishus. <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to know, if you need money, you're welcome to come to us and ask any time you want. But why should you steal it? You probably feel terrible about yourself. Stealing from us, you, you probably feel miserable. I'm sure you feel bad. So in the future, you don't need to, to steal. Come to us, we'll help you out. Love. The, the, put the note in the rubber band on the money and put it back into the drop ceiling. <laughs> this is what with I told them to do. With the, with the money. With the money. Yes. They didn't take the money didn't back. Didn't take the money back. Just put the note in the drop ceiling with the money in the rubber band and leave it there. I, I'm telling Hela Giyid because they, they, they hopped in two seconds flat why this was the right move. Oh, it's the most beautiful thing on earth. We, everyone knows what happened. What do you think happened? The kid what happened was the kid comes in crying his head off, yeah, puts the money on the table, starts bawling his head off, apologizing and thus and yens that he doesn't deserve and he's going to leave and he knows they want to take him out. And they, of course not, and they all hugged and they're thus. And this kid, that was his return. That's, where, that's actually what turned him back. That's what made him start coming back. Because who would do such a thing? Except the El Chayid. What would you tell them to be? He wouldn't find the money. <laughs> My kid wouldn't give it away. You don't know what There's it is? Um, maybe I would have them. them the the yeah, you can't. No, you can't. You can't accuse them <coughs> until you know. You can't. You know I, what I would tell them to do? You know I, I would say like this. Let's go piece by piece. Because oh, before I finish, yeah. oh, yeah, the... let me just go piece by piece. <laughs> if you. By the way, I usually think for a while before I answer. <laughs> I try not to, you know, it's like, Can I don't I want to give the impression. No, no, but before okay, you do, I just want to teach something. I, I don't generally answer anything quickly. Because, you know, people think I know the answers. It's totally not true. You know, I try to think through what makes sense. And every situation is different. Like, I wouldn't... In that situation, I'd have to think about that situation, and then I have to think everyone's listening and there's different situations, so how can I answer generically in a way that someone over there is going to yeah, but that doesn't make sense, you know, the good cash on in two seconds flat, so I'm, I'm thinking how to answer all this. But I think if you don't know for sure, you absolutely have no, you don't, you, you assume, but you don't know, number one, lock up your money more carefully. <laughs> That's what you should do. You should lock up your money more carefully. Keep it locked up. And um, I would do that first, but probably, I probably would definitely not tell him I know. I would look for it. I, I don't know. I, I, definitely, I definitely would not confront him until I know for sure. I wouldn't confront him until I know for sure. I would not do it. Yeah, the famous Anshul story with the money, Aaron Pesa, the Rothschild. Right. I'll tell you, my, my son... I had a similar situation, didn't end that peacefully, but my son got kicked out of yeshiva for the same reason, Gosh music, reading books. Because Shiva said he's like the mach that chucked him out. He says he's not religious today because of that one of my son, the older one that's unfortunately not from today. So my shred took him into Montreal, he's not alive anymore. And he defrauded his credit card. He asked him for a number and he ordered stuff and it was very painful. Sure, it happens all the time. And he felt that... Uh, happens all that the time. Way. Happens all the time, you know. Happen. <laughs> it happens all the time. You know, the, again, I want to go back to the happiness pleasure paradigm. <coughs> so, in the process of going off, the hole in the heart gets bigger. They act out doing more and more dysfunctional behavior because of the principle of mind ganuving in Baku. Because, you know, the more you do this illicit stuff, the more you feel better. They get caught. It breaks the relationship, and so they spiral off because everyone wants to be happy. The tikkun is the opposite. See, that's the chiddush of this. 
although going up can happen in three months, you know, they spiral down like nothing. And coming back, I used to say seven years minimum. For sure, seven years minimum. That means from when you have them, which means usually you have around eighth, ninth grade, you know for sure they're off. You know what I'm saying? All the struggles. But, you know, you, a perceptive person knows in fourth grade, you know, something's going on. But by eighth, ninth grade, you're pretty clear. You've got a serious pasha on your hands. From that point, it's a seven-year stretch. You know, minimum, minimum, before you could expect them to come back to the big three comfortably. <coughs> That's the longest for Zichel. And is there, is there a different uh, between ages? Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to make it a lot worse. I'm being nice. No, no, wait, <laughs> no, no between no, different like ages, I mean, as opposed person, to a teenager, yes, a person yeah, that's married. I'm giving you a I'm just saying the qualim. Yeah. Every yeah. case is different, but let me just be nice. <laughs> let me just be nice to begin I'm with. Let me move everyone in slowly to relax into this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I say for Dover Posh at seven years, many of my clients were bitterly upset with me that they felt I didn't give them hope. And I told them that I'm afraid false hope, to me, is destructive because you will hurt your kid. I'd rather you're angry with me than angry with your kid. So let it out on me. It's okay. I can handle it. Your kid can't. So they let it out on me, many of them. It's okay. But then here's the thing. They asked me, Okay, what do you mean by seven years? I mean, seven years, you know, if you handle it well from the, you know, the seven year stretch, whatever it is, if you handle, if you have all the idea in the unfun, I mean, if Lu Yatsuya in the eighth, ninth grade, you'd have all the ideas you sure, needed yeah. for the sugya, then you could assume within seven years they'll come back to the big three. Chances are very likely they'll come back to the big three, Shabbos, Kashas, and Taz Mishpach. I know, obviously, you know, whatever else, but to me, that's the focus to get them back there. Then other things fall into <coughs> place beautifully. That's seven years. So assuming you have the idea at the beginning. Now, then they ask me, okay, so if they come back to the big three, that means they're free of trauma? And the answer is no, they're still not healed. So they said, when, well, when's the trauma over? Because I see they're still reactive. Even though they keep Shabbos, Kassus, Daz, Mishpacha, but I see episodes, things happen. We're walking on eggshells around them. You know, it's like very awkward. You know, we've got to still tolerate, you know, a lack of sneers, this flagrant, you know, you know, and all sorts of stuff that's, you know, not the big three, that's really, like, when is all this over? So... It would seem to me somewhere around 35. Somewhere around 30. 35 years? Not 35 years. No, you said 35. Is that 35 years? 35 years. Old. Right. Another, about another 15. Tack on another 15 years. Life <coughs> Tack on another 15. You got about 22 years from the on fund to if you play it right to when it's over. I see this with countless of the young people I work with, that even when they get through the parasha somehow, because the parents pull the right moves and the machantim and everyone, you know, and you work the system. You look away and they come back, but they're not, you know, they're still struggling. There's no, it's very rare they come back, occasionally, it's extremely rare they come back without any roshan, you know, of their struggles. And what I see is if you keep working it, you keep the same mahalach. Somewhere in their parenting years as they bring up their kids, the penny drops. The penny finally drops. The, you know, this actually wasn't my parents' fault. Wow. You know, and that which my parents definitely messed up on, any parent could mess up on. Oh my gosh. You know, it's like I'm doing the same thing with my kids. I can't <coughs> believe it. I should have known better. And I'm repeating some of the same errors. And it takes that and our willingness and our patience, our sablanus. So the bracha I give to, you know, people who have babies, you know, you give them the regular bracha, you know, this is you know, all the nice brachas, the regular one. I take them aside afterwards. I go, you got all the regular brachas. Let me give you a real one. 
<laughs> As old age, the whole thing should have patience. Sublimus, your kids are going to drive you crazy. You just had a baby, a nebuch, you think you just had the next briskarov or the next sarashnira. Nebuch, you're for dimmed. You're out of your mind. You're going to love this kid till this kid drives you crazy. Gives you sleepless nights. Ruins your parnasa, wrecks your furniture, embarrasses you barabim, turns out not to be the nachas you thought they were going to be. So the Abish Dalpan, I wish you savlanas. What's savlanas? Be soivel. Ach, it's a lousy word. Tolerate. It says by Yeshua, he was yuchol, he says he had, he had ruach elokim, right? Ruach elokim. Boy. <coughs> That means he knew how to embrace each unique person as a man, everyone for who they are. I tell them, you think you, your kids are going to be just in your image because you had them? Take a look at any mishpacha. Look at the youngest. Your person has, let's say, an average Jewish nice family of eight kids, let's say. So your youngest is now 20 and your oldest is now in the 40s. You're looking at eight different mishpachas. What's the chances of them being like mamish, all like you? Nothing. Right? Occasionally, you get like a weird picture goes around because they all look the same. I wonder what they're actually like at home. They're different. Everyone has a different shama, a different mahalach, a different tachlis, a different person. And we have to be willing to see that. With our kids in crisis, the ones who go through this, where we've got to dig into the trenches and realize into the mid-30s, when they're bringing up their kids, that's when all this healing, if you play it right, that means if you play it right, if you do the right moves, and you look away, and you love them, and you accept them, and you keep your eye on the ball of what's, what's really the ikka here and what's the toffle. So with, what's with, important? With that, is there something that you, that you would not look away? Is everything acceptable? No, 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 no. I, I want to tell you like this. Let's be very clear. Do you look away from everything? It means from like everything, this. no matter what. No, it is. no. You look away from your ego. Uh, no, no. You got the wrong thing. I'm sorry. I, I didn't explain clearly. I'm sorry. You look away from your own ego. But I'm asking ego. That. No, no. I understand. It's the behavior is like this. Everything. If you don't have to. They're showering accept, together. I'm going to say again. I'm saying. I'm going to say again. You have to, if you have developed the ability to get outside your own ego and talk to your child without ego, without negias, tainas, complaints, hurt, personal resentment, without any of it, it's just not there. It's just, I care about you. I want to give you information about life. You can almost say anything to your kids. And they don't resent it. It doesn't turn them away. I don't want to get into the protem, but I want to be careful here. The goal is the relationship. That what facilitates the relationship is, for most people, looking away from stuff. For the vast majority of people, if you don't look away, and you're not Makarov, and you don't do the warm, the kids will never know you have unconditional love for them. In theory, if you can get outside your own ego fully and completely, then you could say to the Shafer, please, sweetie, not in our home. Can you say that? If you got rid of your ego, only if you got rid of your ego. That means you're able to say to them, if this is what you need, I can accept that. I can live with that. I can also ask you for what works for me, because I live here too. If you could get there where your ego doesn't exist, if you could trust yourself, if you could trust yourself to be a person who could communicate so deeply and effectively and meaningfully to your child. I dare say 
it's a rare Bria that can do that. I, I and that's what I'm you, saying. I'm just, I want to put the fact out. If you, the goal is getting rid of your ego so you can reconnect to your kid and your kid will feel loved and cared for and cherished by you. Therefore, for most people, that means looking away, tolerating, accepting, you know, being Messiah, whatever they're doing in a certain degree, this mutzalah locha. That, that package, the whole package comes because it's trying to do a connection of healing that you know I have unconditional love for you. What you are. It's not about my ego. To get your own ego out of the way, that's a job. If you could, I'm simply saying, if you could, Lu Yitzu, you could, then you can have a relationship with your kid and you can talk to them about anything. You could express your feelings. You could tell them how you feel and what you want. But you have to be bothered with Manusa. You got rid of your ego first. Okay. And for most people, I'm telling you, that's almost shy. impossible. It's not shy. You just have to know the truth. Lu Yitzuya could get rid of your ego. If you, so, that's right. So what, it's better not to say anything? 100%. 100%, you're a mazik. I just want you to understand the truth. That what facilitates, you understand, the, 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 what, what creates the potential for return is getting your, your own ego out of the way and reconnecting where they have a reason why they want to return. And for most people, the ego is in the way. I do feel embarrassed about them, and they know it. I do feel resentful. I do feel upset. I can't communicate. For example, if I say to my kid, if I said to my kid, Honey, I understand where you are right now. You smoke on Shabbos. I'm not a fool. I get that. I get it. And if you smoke in your bedroom, Louis, you make a choice to smoke in your bedroom where you and the Rabbani Shalom are in that room and it doesn't, it's not in my face, you're not hurting me with it, I don't smell it, I don't see it, why on earth would that be a problem for me? That's not about me. That's not about me. I fully understand, I know what's going on, I'm not an idiot. But I care about you. But you'd have to get rid of your ego. And I dare say, there's very few people on earth who could do it. I just don't believe most people could do it. I just no, they can't. It, it's you doable. I've done it. Do? Yes. But I tell you, I tell, I'm just telling you, it's a goal to work for. Midas. At least, no, it's a goal to work for in your midas. That's what you're after. But Abba says, if you're looking at them like a choyle nafesh, if you really get to what this sugi is all about in its teeth guide, and you truly see this is a choyla nefesh, a damaged person, so of course you can get there. You have to work, but you have to know where you're going. You're going to a place where you got rid of your ego. You pulled it out. And it's a wonderful benefit, this sugi, if you can do that. Are you kidding? You know what a powering sugi this sugi is for you? What a gift. He, he's he, he, he wants to tell him because he doesn't want the other kids to see I, him. I understand. You're I kissing at the know. table, you're taking I'm a shower together, again. there's other kids in the I'm house. Please you. explain that. I'm going to ask you it's again. It's not a I'm going to ask you again. Is that about your ego? Is I have other you? kids that are sitting in the house. Yeah, I've got other kids. I have a kid that was sitting me. at the Seder. I want to tell you something. Yeah. If, you, if you're going to speak to me, do you mind if I'm honest? No, oh, please. No, but I'm the most hurt. honest person here, probably. Okay, it might hurt. <laughs> I can take it. Trust okay, me. No, I but I really want you to yeah, yeah, consider yeah. because it's something everyone here yeah, has. Yeah, no, no, I no, no, no. Shut, shut off the video. <laughs> shut off the video then. No, no, shut up. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's fine. No, because I think this. I think this is important because I think what's happening here. We all have a piece of this. Everyone has a piece of this. We may not want to face it, but we all have a piece of this. I want to tell you. Listen carefully to me. What I heard. I'm a good therapist. Now, I, I'm going to ask you, Mechila, in advance. No, no, go ahead, but I'm going to spread this out to all of us, including myself. I think we all have a piece of this in us. I want to be honest. Piece of what tell. I'm about to say in us. He's just giving me reshus to this is a demonstration to bring it out. <laughs> and I appreciate it. No. But I want you to know, I honestly, in my humble opinion, include myself, <laughs> that I know, I know we all have a piece of this in us. And I'm going to show you the words you said. Let's re-roll the tape. I've got other kids. I've got a Seder plane. I've got... See, when you say that, when you go there, you're already done. 
<laughs> okay. You're done. You're toast. Okay, so what should you no, say? No, uh, no, no, <laughs> even there. Insane. When you move wrong. on, what should you say? What you're doing is manipulating. You're manipulating the situation. And when you do that, it's about your ego. And until you get rid of your ego, I don't care what intervention you do, you lost. Your kids will know. They'll know. It doesn't work. It's not I've got, we know I've got, I've got nachrais to love my kids and be mechanical and help them grow up and overcome their traumas and their damage. I have a chiv to love them, unconditionally love them. And what's with the chiv about uh, different ki other kids not That's being right. Okay, okay, so you want to make it protestic now that we can do the whole sugi about damaging the other kids now. Hey, you know, let me tell you, we have, <laughs> we might as well let's, Cancel the rest of this program. <laughs> <laughs> let's stay here, Rabbi Sain. Let's just go. So is that this. the reason? Because I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. When I work with someone, this takes years of development to see the answer to this. To see the answer. I could take it to the answer. It would just make someone else in the crowd say, what, are you crazy? And he's going to have a big cash on me if I give you the answer to this question. I promise you. I'll prove it if you want. I'll do it. I'll do it, and it'll sound my sugar. You see, what you haven't come to terms with yet, why did the Rabbi Nishalem put those other siblings in your family to be exposed to her? Did that occur to you yet? My wife keeps talking about it, yes. No, but why? <laughs> and, and we, she, she keeps talking about it. She's right. She keeps did we it. come to terms with that yet? Did we reckon yeah. with that I'm question? question no. Like, we reckon with, I have a chiv to my other kids. What about the Rabbi Nishalem? He put them there. He they put should them see there. it. What? Oh, they should see you. When you should see They should be affectionate. affectionate every time you do a should. And they should kiss each other every, and touch each other. Yes, yeah, okay. Every time you do a should, you see, I have to take you apart again. I don't what? want to do it. No, I don't I want don't to mind. do it. I don't mind. It's fine. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> what I'm trying to explain, I want this to be valuable for everyone, not just yeah. me. No, no, I'm serious. I want to try is it, and... Is it the Shem Shemayim? It, it, it is. It is. It no, is. no, no, no. So how come... It's is, not. Why do you say to... Uh, sure not. It's because if you, it only bothers because the other kids are there. Oh, the other kids are not there. No, the other kids are not there. No, no, no. It's not true. 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 And I understand it. Stop. 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 Listen to me. Stop a second. I told you that if I answer you, <laughs> without a development of the understanding of the Ashkafa and the value system, I promise you it will create confusion and disruption in people's minds and ideas. It's like, how shall I explain it? It's like I walk into a shear. I, I go to Erzisol on the Yachekala, and I walk in to a very difficult Lamdish shear in a sugi I'm not in, and someone says over a Kivega in the shear. And I listen and I say, I don't know, that pshat doesn't make sense to me. I'd like to see someone do that. Take on a Rosh Ariely and go there. When he says over that big area, you walk in, and a sugi you're not holding and say, ah, doesn't make sense to me. Excuse me, doesn't make sense. I want to see you do that. It, it's mamish. I, I, Rabosa, you have to understand. We have to relax. They, these <coughs> questions are crucial questions for our own neshamas. If this is not a journey for me to get rid of my ego, if I'm not going to embrace this sugya, is about me first, about getting rid of my big fat ego, well then I'm not going to help anyone. And I've got to do that first. Now, that means thinking through very delicate questions and shailas that are very complicated. For example, why did the Rabbani Shalom put all these other kids in that family? How come he put them there? Why didn't next door get them? I want to know why not. And I've got news for you, by the way. I've got news for you. Do you know how many kids I've worked with who were profoundly mentally and emotionally damaged by the insecurity created by their parents throwing out their sibling? crushing their sibling and throwing them out, the Shem Shemayim to protect them, who were mentally and emotionally insecure and damaged the rest of their lives. The foundation of trust was taken from them, where they didn't trust, and they developed all sorts of anxiety disorders, OCDs, all sorts of problems that were incredibly hard to treat or understand how, where they even came from. And until 
Badakus, we began to see how that happened and how they felt about what their parents did and what it took from them. You can't, what, my point here is only a simple point. I hope I'm not being a bad no, no. It's, it's My point is this, the overarching, see, you want to go into the pratim, each one has a different prat. I hate to do it publicly. It's not the gay. It's not appropriate. You know, each family has a different mat of different circumstance. You know, you have to work through each family situation. To answer Clolyistic for everybody, this is the answer for all people with all circumstances, is a very risky thing to do, and I don't want to do it. I don't want to be drawn into doing it. But what I am comfortable to say is this, is if we embrace the sugya, as the primary piece of this sugi is me getting rid of my ego, that I can interact with and relate to with my children. Guess what? It's fascinating, but they start wanting to modify their own behavior without you ever telling it to them. Where they come to you and say, Tati, I'm so embarrassed that I ever did that. I took a shower with him. My mum is boosted out of my brain. What do you think of me? And she breaks down crying, crushed to her core. And that shafts a tick on in her, which is totally wasted when you went after her to stop her doing it because you're protecting the other kids who were going to be exposed to this anyway by Rabbani Shalom. And guess what? When you then, after this happens, go to them and say, now I want to tell you, and you go with her, can we talk to your siblings? Do you mind? And she says, yes, I owe it to them. I've done that. Many times, I owe it to them. And it's amazing the kind of things that start happening. The pure ruchnius that starts pouring out. That's absolutely astonishing. Because you have the patience to wait and work on your own ego first. Whenever, you know, you can just monitor your own language. We all have this. But I blame myself. I had this for years. We all have this. It's not you. It just... you. You were so helpful to me, just to bring out this. <laughs> no, I want to tell you then, because on Shabbos, but when I gave her a bracha, she thanked me, because he was sitting at the table for the seder, and he was sitting about probably about this close. And she thanked you for what? For allowing him to come. Yeah. For Yontif. Of course. She said it. Of course. She gave me a big hug and she said thank you, and she kept That's all Yontif. Thank you for what? Huh? For allowing him to be there. I just, I, I, I want to be very clear. If we're going to be matzliach right. with these sugis. We've got to put the doggish in the place where it belongs, the primary doggish. And that doggish is me working on my ego, so that when I relate to my kid, they feel the love. They feel the connect. That starts healing the whole in the heart. That heals it. Slowly, it takes years, but it heals the whole in the heart. And for kid, I don't have to tell them about the inappropriateness, because they already know. Well, you think any of these kids who are doing these inappropriate things thinks that you agree? Think, yeah, give them a multiple choice. I hear Get a multiple choice test. Write down ten questions, right, of all the things that your kids are doing wrong. They're like, you know, here's question one. Is it mutu or asa to take a shower with your boyfriend? together on Shabbos in the house or on weekdays, let's say weekdays. Is it mutter <laughs> right, to take a shower with chance. your boyfriend? Do your parents, A, accept this and they're proud of you? B, are they upset with you? C, they have no opinion about the subject. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Whatever, D, whatever, put them down. And then you get ten questions like this about your Ashkop. So you tell your kid like this, here, honey, I got an idea. I got this multiple choice test for you. <laughs> if you can identify correctly my Ashkafas on these 10 questions, I'll give you $1,000 and a free trip with your boyfriend to out to Seoul for a week. I'm doing that anyway. <laughs> now, does anyone have a Habermina that your kid won't get all 10 questions right? You're asking your kid, can you identify my Ashkafas about your unhuggers, about your behaviors? If you can get my Ashkafas correct, all ten, you get a thousand dollars and a trip to Israel. Does anyone have a half a minute whether your kid will get them all right? A zikha get them all right. So exactly what am I doing when I just got to tell them? Just got to tell them. They just got to know. They should know. They went through the system. They, know. they already know. So what are you just telling them? Hey, you're upset. That's right. And your ego's in the way. 
Mm. You, uh, and what you're telling them is, <coughs> what you're telling them is, don't bother coming back because there's no one to come back to. Because your father's got a big fat ego. That's what we're telling him. It's not worth coming back. There's no one home. There's no anticipation of a warm, loving Yom Tov and a warm, loving Shabbos. There's no, don't anticipate bringing your kids here to our house one day because I'll probably be horrible to them too. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's amazing. And when you, when you look away and you work on your ego first, they already know it's wrong. It's not like they know it's right. There's not a half a minute of half a minute of half a minute. They know exactly it's wrong. And when you look away and you tolerate and you do all this stuff, whatever it is, again, I don't want to go into the protim of it. You know, that's a detailed thing I, each individual I speak to you privately about. When you look away, you shaft healing in the pleasure, happiness, pleasure paradigm. And you give them a reason to want to change. And guess what? When they're 35, they'll give you that call and they'll say, Tati, I'm so sorry. It's amazing. <laughs> Isn't it worth it? Isn't it worth it? What are we here in this world for? Let's be honest. What is anyone here in this world for? If not, Tikkun Amidus, Shleim is to work on us. So what are we here for? Yeah, of course, because she's human. It's in your face all the time. It's there all the time. Well, I was say, you think I don't know this? No, so? You think I don't know this? Okay. I'm telling you, your body language, this whole thing has to go. You gotta Shut chill. Up. My friend, you gotta chill. Get a massage. You get a massage, you gotta chill. <laughs> I'm serious, oh. body language says it all. Uh -oh. It's true. No, no, it's about 100%. Forgive me, you said No, no, there you I'm a very nice guy. guy. I charge no for this usually. <laughs> That's so, fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. I went up against. Well, who's the other one that was at the? <laughs> well, which which one person? Which rub was there? Huh? No, but but can which I? Which rub was there? Was there some rub I went I against? Just, the, I, just the 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 I just want to be the same. This is a stickle. Yeah, about the ego. Is you have to be boidic your own language. You know, I hear people say it. You know that I. It's my my Shabbos. Look what I'm doing to my Shabbos table. My Shabbos table. It's the Rebbeinu Shem Shabbos table, first of all. You know, maybe my Shabbos table should be a loving place. What do you mean, my Shabbos table? You own this? What? Okay, technically I buy this on the table. Okay, fine. You know, come on, let's be real. I want my Shabbos table to be their Shabbos table. I I'm fine with Shabbos. I keep Shabbos. I like Shabbos. I would like that Shabbos table to be their Shabbos table. It already is mine. I don't need that Shabbos table. I don't need any Shabbos table. I'm happy you don't Shabbos. With or without the Shabbos table. I hope. They need a Shabbos table. It's really my Shabbos table. No, I'm serious. We all... <coughs> you understand? I think we all have a little bit of this in us, unfortunately. Yep. It's about my Shabbos table. And, and, and we think that's Messiah, and we think that's Tyra. It's rubbish. It's rubbish, Rabbi Sai. It's ego. It should be their Shabbos table. Good, so you want to tell me about old-fashioned chinuch and what we should. Okay, good, that's true, that's nice. But that's not now. That's not now, not with these kids. And if the Rabbi Shem chose to put other yingle in this family, I'm going to talk about it in Matzi Shabbos. I'm I'm going to let loose. <laughs> okay, don't worry. We're going to... Uh, you're on the right. You're on the right. You're on the right place. It's the ego. It's only the ego. Because if you have a neighbor... Listen, Rabbi, say, listen, listen, listen. What someone's speaking, go ahead. You have a neighbor that the parents threw out the kid on the street. Yeah. And the kid is crying. And you take him, the kid into the house under any circumstances. And you don't tell the kid a word. Shabbos what much about it. Mitzvah what much about it. Brach is what much about it. And it's your child. It's your seed. Yeah. It's your ego. Yeah, 100%. Well, if your neighbor, you would have no issue. And you would feel a hero. And and a a neighbor's guy, the only thing that's always... No, 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 no. The baby's of a stuff, Sharang. Hey, not more. The baby's of a stuff, Sharang. Not more. 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 Nimmst du an, da kennst du die Gestalt mit Rachmonis. Ja, verstehe. Ja, was da, also Rachmonis gerade, was da alles weggekickt. Da Igor hat mich gespielt. Was? Was da hier? Okay. Okay. What he's saying is... In English, in English. Translate English. Let's stay with English. For the English for the... I don't understand myself. The English crowd. Yeah. It's much harder when it's your own. Of course, it's much harder. There's no question. And, it, and it's much harder when it's a boy, when it's a girl, than it's a boy. But, but again, no question. I just want to say like this. No question. If here's, we have to finish off now. But here's the thing, for both If we are going to be honest Jews, 
then we're going to look inside. Let's start this weekend of rejuvenation, of chizuk. Let's start by being honest. How about that? Is that, is that yep. such a bad thing? No. I think it's a good thing. It's an honest request. I think we could be honest. It's an honest request. Yeah, it's an honest request. I say it to myself too. That if we could be honest, and let's start with an on fun, we'll go to sleep tonight realizing, you know, maybe more important than me worrying about this detail or that detail and the siblings and this and those is worrying about my ego. Maybe that's more important. And I can see that in two ways. By the way, if you have a wife, you can see it instantly. You just ask her. <laughs> She'll tell really you, you don't ask her. No, it's just really easy. If you, if you happen to have a wife, just ask her. Or, or don't yeah, ask her. Yeah, She'll tell you She's going to tell you anyway. Yeah, just ask her. Honey, do you think my ego gets in the way sometimes? Like, I dare anyone to ask your wife that question. I dare you. <laughs> I can, I can oh, test that anyone who asks, who doesn't, or she's lying. I want to tell you, anyone, it will be, 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 be the best Musa experience of your life. Her voice, I go upstairs and I say, Russell said I should ask you this question. Do you think my ego ever gets in the way? Yeah, I dare anyone to ask that question. Because here's, let's have a good start to the weekend. A good, two things, two things, if I may say, and then we'll finish with this. Two things. One is, watch your ego in your body language. As soon as you start doing like jerky movements, you know your ego's.